Hello ladies and gentlemen, I have another message on marriage today and we're going to read some verses of scripture which are all about the promises of God on marriage. Whether you're married or you're considering marriage, then you need to listen to this. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, we read, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. God will make a helper suitable for you if you're seeking to find a godly man or a godly woman. Pray about it. Don't just jump into a relationship with someone that you know or you've grown up with or you just happen to be in that circle of friends or relatives or family. Think about it. Don't just fall in love. Love is an act of will. It's not that you fall in love. It's a wrong conception. It's a wrong idea. It's a wrong phrase even to use. Falling in love. It's a Hollywood and media perception of love that have been pumped into our brains from childhood. You don't fall in love, you will to love. It's an act of will. If you're already married, you are suitable for that person. You are suitable for your other half. So don't think that you're not match and seek other relationships. You already match because God has made you suitable. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up, but pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Again, it just shows you the part the couples are supposed to help each other, not to be a stumbling block for each other. You're supposed to help and have one aim, one goal in life, and walk towards that goal, that destination that God has for you, not you have for yourself, or she has, or he has for, for, for themselves. You have to seek God's will for you in your life as a married couple, and see what God wants you to do, and seek the counsel of godly, not the counsel of the word. Seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ask God, and God will reveal it to you by dreams or visions or just inspiration. You need to have the desire of God, both of you, not just one or the other, both. You have to have the same goal, the same destination. That only happens through the Holy Spirit. You have to only pray, and if necessary, even fast. And it's up to you what God puts in your heart. You have to do that. Then God will reveal His will for you. And you have to go towards that destination, towards that goal. Make it clear to your other half. Make it clear that this is where we are going. This is where we want to be in five years time, ten years time. Or not even that. Just say this is where we are heading and we want to get to that destination. Spiritually, physically, financially, you know, every area of your life. Communication is an important key to success in a marriage relationship and you need to communicate that message to each other and say this is where we want to go and this is our destination this is what God wants us to do not me not you and you both have to believe in that honestly and sincerely earnestly you have to believe and pray God will reveal that once it's revealed then you have to believe it if you don't believe it, you still have to keep praying till you get a conviction that is right. Then you go towards that goal. If you do it that way, then you will help each other because you both have the same desire and you both want to get to the same destination. You want to do the same thing. Whatever it may be, people have different ambitions and desires in life, but it has to be from God. And you have to seek God first and if necessary seek the counsel of godly move on from there towards your destination 
That way you have to help each other, basically. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, we read, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. You become one flesh. And what that means is not just the physical flesh, one flesh. It's not talking about that. It's talking about your whole being will be one entity, one Everybody will see you as a couple. Everybody will know that this couple are going from A to B and they're all together in everything they do. They have that desire that God has put in their heart and that ambition and that destination they're going towards that. It will be clear to everyone that you are together and it's one. One become one, it's not necessarily in flesh, it's one in the spirit. You are one in the spirit. You have the same goal, same desires, same passion, same destination, same aim in life. You're living as one, not as two separate lives under one roof. That's not marriage. If you're living your own life, and your husband is living his own life, then you're living two single lives under one roof. You're joined together in flesh. You're not joined together in the spirit. You need to revisit your marriage. It's a serious thing. You need to revisit your marriage according to the word of God. You need to see how you're supposed to live according to the Word of God. Not according to me, not according to your friends, the circle of your friends, your network, your church. Majority are in the wrong. Don't follow others. Follow the Word of God. As a couple, you're supposed to be together. In honesty, sincerity, as far as your destination, your goals and aims are concerned in life. You have to have the same spirit. If you are living your own life that you had before you got married, you just carry on with your own clan of friends, with your own, with your own network of uh, friends. If you are living your own life and you carry on your life as you had before you got married, as if you are single, you just have a partner, as they, as they call it, partner, which is another thing to talk about. But you're still living a single life under a different pretext, if you like, under a different name as married couple, then you need to revisit that. Whether you're a man or a woman, if you're still carrying on living your life the way you lived your life when you were single, things have changed now. You are a married woman, you are a married man. Things should change. If you're still living the same life and you have the same kind of network of friends of, or people around you, and you're still having the same kind of contact with those people, you're still having the same kind of relationship with others, you're still going to the same club, you're still going to the same game, you're still doing the same business. I don't mean job. I don't mean actual business. And I don't mean everything has to change. If you're working, you know, in an office, you should just give up and go somewhere else. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean the nature, the spirit of your living, your lifestyle needs to change once you got married. You're two coming in a marriage relationship. Things have to change. I can't carry on going to the same basketball uh, club as I used to do and she can't carry on going to the same knitting club that she was joined when she was single and I was single then after we married. I can't carry on going to the same pub and have the same kind of friends that I used to have when I was single 
on my own, we're living separate lives again. As if we're dating. We just come together in the same house and just meet each other and talk, maybe, maybe. Most cases they don't even talk. This is not marriage. If you're watching this message and if you're listening to this, you need to seriously get down with your partner, if you like, which I hate this word, I keep saying that because the word is using it and, and it's become so common to use. Your husband or your wife, you need to get together and pray earnestly. Talk to each other first and say, look, this is not going, this is not right, this is not godly. We need to get together and earnestly seek God, pray to God, First of all, repent of our sins, that we've been sinning, really. I'm living my own life, my own lifestyle, and you're living your own life and your own lifestyle. We are bringing two different lifestyles under one roof, calling it a marriage relationship. On the paper it is, as far as the documents are concerned, you have a document, but that, that is not what God is concerned about. God doesn't care about that. Adam and Eve didn't have a marriage certificate. He can't care less about that paper. It doesn't even mean a thing. Jews come to Jesus and say Moses told us that we could give our wife a certificate of divorce and let her go. But Jesus says no, that's not. That was for the time when your hearts were hardened. Now, the law of God is now written in our hearts, not on a stone and tablets. He's taken the heart of stone away from us and he's given us a heart of flesh. And he's given that law, that conscience in our heart, which is ever more sharpened if you receive the Holy, Holy Spirit. You need to get together, pray earnestly and mean it. When you pray, mean it. Now God, show us how we should live as a married couple. Because we've been living separate lives. We hardly see each other probably. I don't know. I don't know you. I'm just saying I've seen these kind of people. I've seen these kind of couples and marriages that are not founded in the Word. They're not founded in the Word of God. They're not based on the Word of God. Their foundation is shabby. Their foundation is so weak and on the basis of worldly things, really. Carnal. It's all carnal. Now, you need to get down on your knees and pray earnestly to God to reveal to you how to live your lives, how to live together as a couple, and what kind of aim and goal you should have in life. That will join you together. If you have one destination to start with, one goal, one aim in life, one main aim in life. Maybe one for long term and one for the short term. Then you will, you're your prayers will be aligned. Your walk will be aligned with each other. You ask and pray for the same things. You're looking for the same things. You're open-minded about things around you in the same way. Mark chapter 10 verses 8 and 9. The two will become one flesh, so they're no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. What God has joined together, let man not separate. This is not a recommendation, which people read and understand it that way. This is not a request. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. You, under, you remember when God was creating the heaven and earth and everything in it? He said, let there be light, and there was. Let there be man, and there was, and it was good. It's the same thing, let man not separate. Impossible! Well, that might bring a smile on some people's faces. 
but some of the people's faces will probably fall. It is not possible. It's a prophecy. If you make it possible, you're trying to go against God. And you might achieve that, but you will see the consequences of it. God is saying, he is not allowing that. Let man not separate. Let there be light. Let there be married couple. He's made a couple here. And he says, let man not separate. It's a prophecy, it's a command. And whatever God says, every word that comes out of the mouth of God will not return back to him in vain. Just the same as when the rain comes down, it won't go back to the sky without wetting the ground. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8 The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. You have duties. You have to do your duties to your wife and the wife should do her duties to the husband. Again, going back to the same concept that we have to live as a couple. You have to live as a couple, not single lives under one roof. Single people, two single people as namely couple under one roof. That's no good. That's not just not good, that's not godly. Unfortunately, majority are living that way, majority in the church are living that way. That's true because I've seen them. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Do you understand that? is so 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 powerful marriage should be honored by all if you see a married couple and you're single and you have eyes and you're looking lustfully at that man at that woman watch it god says marriage should be honored by all honor that marriage it's not just the husband and wife honoring the marriage, it has to be honored by all, even the outsiders. They have to recognize that marriage and honor that. Outside that marriage relationship, nobody else should look at those individuals with another intention, with another sexual intention. A marriage bed should be kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 15 Drink water from your own system, running water from your own well. Don't covet your neighbor's well, don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's husband. Don't covet anything. Drink water from your own well. If you don't have a well, get one. If you don't have a system, you need to get one. If you're really in need of that. But Jesus says it is better for the man to stay single if he can accept that but not many can accept that. It is hard. Because that way you can dedicate yourself to the Lord. You won't have a conflict of interest. You won't have, your interests are not divided. Providing for the family, for the wife, for the children and trying to please God as well. Pleasing God and pleasing the uh, family is difficult. But it's not impossible, obviously, lots of people are doing it, millions are doing it, but it's better 
Jesus is saying it that way. But Paul says, I'd rather you get married. If you're dying in passion, then you better be married. Colossians chapter 3 verses 18 and 19. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. These are the duties. Submit to your husband and love your wife as Christ loved his church. May God richly bless you.